In April 2022, Honda and General Motors entered a partnership to jointly develop affordable EVs that would cost Americans less than $30,000. Initially, it was a noble goal. But now, it's just a pipe dream. That's because Honda and GM recently scrapped their plans and canceled their joint collaboration completely. Today, we're looking at why things went south and what we can expect from Honda and GM now. And hang tight to hear about the new strategic partnership between Hyundai and Amazon. Imagine using voice commands inside your car to open your garage door before you pull your car in or to turn the lights on inside your home even before you park. By the way, a lot of time and research was done to put together this video, and I really want to know what you think. So, while you're watching this, please comment below and share your thoughts. The initial plan since 2022 was for Honda and GM to co-develop a series of affordable compact crossovers that would feature the next generation batteries. These EVs were set to arrive in 2027. And the joint partnership would have brought affordable EVs not just to North America, but also South America and even China. Here's the thing. In 2020, GM debuted Altium as its third generation lithium ion battery cell. Right now, this battery can be found inside everything from GMC Hummer EV to the Chevy Equinox EV and even GM's bright drop electric delivery vans. Anyway, the Honda GM collaboration aimed to produce millions of vehicles using the GM Altium technology. These vehicles were also slated to have sticker prices below $30,000. At the same time, GM and Honda intended to explore solid state batteries and the use of materials like lithium, metal, and silicone. So why did Honda and GM cancel their plans? Well, in a nutshell, you can blame it on the changing economic climate. According to Toyota CEO Toshihiro Mibe, after a year of research, Honda decided that the partnership would be difficult as a business. The cost of this program proved to be too much for the Japanese automaker. GM also announced it was unsure if it would be able to reach its $14 billion profit forecast for 2023. Pretty much, GM blamed it on the United Auto Workers strike. Consider, too, how in recent weeks, the outlooks on BEVs has lost its shimmer. Reason is, consumer demand for BEVs is slower than car makers expected, and in fact, has leveled some. Consider, too, how limited the charging infrastructure is and higher cost of EVs, so it shouldn't be such a huge surprise people aren't enthralled with buying them. By the way, if you haven't seen my video about why hybrids will be the future and not battery electric cars, check it out. GM spokesman Daryl Harrison says that GM did extensive studies and analysis before GM and Honda made a mutual decision to discontinue their partnership. Despite that, each company said it remains fully committed to the affordability of the EV market. But Honda and GM are still friends. They continue to work together on other joint products. The divorce won't impact the launch of the Honda Prologue and Acura ZDX, both of which are mid-sized crossovers that use the Altium battery technology and share the same platform as the Chevy Blazer EV and Cadillac Lyric. Both crossovers are still slated to be released in early 2024. Jim and Honda also remain partners along with BMW, Hyundai, Kia, Mercedes-Benz, and Stellantis in a joint venture to launch a public charging network in North America. Together, these car brands plan on deploying 30,000 DC fast chargers across the U.S. and Canada starting next year. Honda also announced plans to collaborate with GM to start operating a robo-taxi service in Japan using the Cruise Origin starting in 2026. The Cruise Origin robo-taxi, in case you weren't aware, is an autonomous EV developed by a GM-based company. Although I'm curious how Honda feels after the recent news of California suspending the Cruise from operating its state after two horrible accidents and the CEO retiring. But that's another story for another time. By the way, several weeks ago, Honda committed to giving auto workers a pay raise to remain competitive in the car industry. The changes will take effect January 2024. Honda Associates on pay progressions will receive base wage increases of 11%. In addition, Honda also plans on shortening progression time for production associates across its U.S. facilities. Since 2021, Honda's added over 10 new benefits. I'm talking about things like child care reimbursement, student loan repayment programs, and so forth. Honda said it'll look for more opportunities to improve the employment experience for its associates. But Honda isn't the first to increase workers' wages in recent weeks. Actually, weeks earlier, Toyota announced plans to increase the highest wage for most assembly line workers by 9.2% starting in January. The United Auto Workers Union, or UAW, took credit, of course, for the recent pay increases by Toyota and Honda. UAW President Sean Fain said the pay raises were a direct result of the UAW strike efforts. 
Fain explained that if Toyota really wanted to give these raises out of the kindness of their heart, they could have done so a year ago. It's the UAW's biggest goal to organize like it's never organized before. Sean Fain said when the UAW returns to the bargaining table in five years, which will be 2028, it won't just be with the big three, but with the big five or even the big six. If you're wondering what they mean by the big five or big six, well, now the UAW is still trying to organize employees of non-unionized car companies. On its Facebook page, the UAW is calling out to the employees, saying that there is a much better life out there and that it's up to the employees to take action and join the UAW. Specifically, the UAW is targeting Tesla, Rivian, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, Volkswagen, Toyota, Honda, Mazda, Subaru, Nissan, and Hyundai. By the way, speaking of Hyundai, it has joint efforts brewing too. But this time it's not with another car maker. It's with Amazon. That's right. I'm talking about the online marketplace. Here's the thing. Online car shopping is nothing new. Take Carvana and CarMax, for example. They're in business because the big car makers haven't quite nailed the online experience. Well, now it looks like Amazon wants a piece of the car pie. Hyundai recently announced that it will team up with Amazon to create an online marketplace for Hyundai cars. Right now, there's no further news as to to whether Amazon will bring on other car brands to its marketplace when it initially kicks off the program, or whether Hyundai will be the first guinea pig. Here's how it'll work. Let's say you're the customer shopping for Hyundai. First, log in to Amazon.com and type in your location. Amazon will show you the current inventory that's available in your local vicinity. You'll be able to see 360 degrees of the car from the inside and out. You can then select the Hyundai car you want, choose the trim and options, and go through the financing process if you don't want to buy it with cash. After you add the Hyundai and the car to checkout, you can put down your down payment and sign all the documents online. The whole premise is that you won't need to go to the dealer. In other words, you don't have to play the haggling game when you threaten to walk out for a better deal or have to deal with price markups later. The idea is to simply see the price, the rebates you qualify for, if any, and available incentives. And since you'll be picking a car that's installed with local dealers, you'll be able to get the car within a few days of purchase. There are a few caveats you should be aware of. For starters, Amazon's infamous return policy won't apply to the cars sold through its platform. In other words, you can't return the car. At least, it won't be an option when the program launches. Although, Amazon and Hyundai said they will review the trend in customer interactions and reassess in the future whether or not it may become a viable option. But normally, when you buy a new car, most people want to test drive it. And that's a wise thing to do. But test driving isn't an option option with Amazon. So in reality, you still need to visit the local dealership, at least if you want to test drive the car. Now on the surface, it sounds simple, but behind the scenes, it's way more complex. For example, dealerships have to sign up for the program. But the thing is, not all dealerships are interested in the Amazon program, and some that are interested aren't qualified to join. Basically, Amazon is looking for high-quality dealerships who are customer-focused early adopters. Right now, there are more than 800 Hyundai dealerships in the United States. But when the Amazon program officially launches, only 15 to 20 dealers will be qualified initially to sell vehicles through Amazon. By Amazon becoming Hyundai's digital middleman, it moves Hyundai one step closer to selling vehicles to consumers without the need of a dealership network at all. Interestingly, not using a dealership network is banned or limited in 48 of the 50 states. This especially applies to delivery of a vehicle directly to a customer's home. But that's not where the Hyundai Amazon collaboration will stop. Hyundai will be bringing Amazon Alexa to Hyundai cars in 2025. So you'll be able to ask Alexa to open your garage door as you pull your car in. Or you can ask it to turn on the lights at home even before you step inside your home. Here's the thing, right now almost 25% of American households have at least one Alexa device. The Amazon Echo, the device where you use voice commands to empower your home, is not only one of the most popular smart speakers in the US, but it works with Alexa, which is unequivocally the leader in the smart assistant sector. Almost 72 million Americans actively use Alexa. 85% of Alexa users use it to set a timer and alarm, 83% use it to play songs, and 66% use it to read the news. Now, you might think it's the younger generation who uses Alexa. Alexa, since the most younger consumers are typically more tech savvy. But believe it or not, Alexa's top users are the middle age group or older generations. In fact, 39% of Alexa users are age 35 to 44. 34% are between 45 and 54, and more than 40% are 55 or older. Anyway, going back to Hyundai. The car maker's partnership with Amazon goes even further. Hyundai announced that it will use Amazon Web Services, or AWS for short, as its preferred cloud provider across all its departments. Hyundai's goal is to transform itself into a more data-driven company. 
using cloud technology. So it intends to migrate its current on-premise applications, which support everything across research, product engineering, and customer engagement to AWS. Hyundai will also design and implement a master building training and certification program to train engineers in critical cloud skills. All of this is to say the Amazon Hyundai relationship is strategically broad. Personally, I feel this is a smart move by Hyundai. It's ahead of the game compared to other car makers in striking this deal with Amazon because Amazon has more than 300 million active users, almost half of which are Amazon Prime subscribers in America. The company is worth over a trillion dollars and its brand value is second only to Apple, blowing Google and Microsoft out of the water. So this is a prime opportunity for Hyundai. And we'll just have to wait and see if Hyundai and Amazon will deliver what they promise. But now you tell me, would you ever consider buying a car on Amazon? And what do you think about Honda and GM breaking up? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.